So in the previous video, we looked at writing a specific, very small parser from scratch. Um, you could say quick and ugly. Um, and I think the main issues with it that there's a lot of plumbing needed to deal with the maybe type. And there are no real reusable components. Uh, that is patterns um, that we are likely to see over and over again when building for parsers. So in this next part, we're going to look at a parsing library, um, a, a collection of small functions for building parsers. So the parsing library itself, um, a little synopsis here, is not a huge a number of functions. Um, there are one or two more that come from the various um, type classes to which this belongs. But the, the important one for, uh, for the present purposes is the fact that this is a, a, also a monad. So this is, you can think of it as a, another kind of instruction, instructions for parsing. And indeed, um, uh, we will talk about that in, in a moment. Uh, the other key component is that there is, a parser is represented by an abstract data type. So this is the type which is an instance of the class monad. So we've seen two other examples of abstract data types so far, both of which were monads. The first one was IO, which is um, which is built into Haskell. It's not defined anywhere in particular. And the other one that we treated largely like an abstract data type is gen for uh, uh, quick gen generators. We, and when, when I say abstract, what I mean here is that we either can't or we simply don't look at how they're built. So we have a type, but we don't know what the basic definition of the type is, the constructors. And so the only way that we can interact with that type are using the standard functions that the library or the system provides for us. So the, 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 uh, the key function that we need when we have this abstract data type is something that allows us to as we actually apply the parser. A parser is no longer a function, it's a type. So there's a function called parser with a small p, which takes a parser and gives us a parsing function, something that converts strings to maybe a thing in a string. Okay, so let's take a little look at this um, library. And we'll start with the very first example, which is the sat function. So the sat function parses a single character that satisfies some property p that you pass as the first argument. So the first argument to sat is a property, and it parses a single character looking for a character that satisfies the property. So if we move back to the, the file, I'm going to rewrite the first example from the previous video using the combinators of the library. And so if you want to parse a single digit, we use the sat parser with is digit. So this will be a parser for a single digit. So if we actually run that, we can't just um, run a digit, we can't just apply digit to uh, a string as we did before, we need to use the parse function. So we're going to parse using the digit parser one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, and we find indeed a digit followed by the rest. If we were to take the example and put something on the front that isn't a digit, then of course this parser would fail as you would expect. Okay, so the number parser, uh, parsing an integer, so the first thing you might think of is, is using some kind of repetition. And I mentioned repetition as one of the, the features of the library. And indeed, um, there is uh, two parser functions, or parser combinators as we call them, building parsers from other parsers. Uh, one is called one or more, and the other is zero or more. It takes a parser for a thing and turns it into a parser for a list of things by repeatedly applying that uh, parser. And in one case, the list you get is always non-empty um, if, if you succeed. And the other case, you can succeed simply by returning the empty list. So what we expect then is that a number should be one or more digits. Um, now, if we actually try that out, so I haven't compiled that yet because it won't compile, but I can compile the right hand side, I can try out the right hand side. So if we take one or more digit from some string, um, It will succeed in getting all the digits from the front of a string, but that will result in not a um, not an integer, but a string containing digits. So we need to convert the string containing digits into an integer. And the way that we did that before was to apply the read function. So we're going to read some not some sequence of digits uh, as if they were an integer, and we indeed get the integer back. Now you might be then tempted to just say, well, we just need to read this thing. Um, and then we're done. But this thing here is not an integer. It's a parser for integers. So we can't apply read to a parser for integers because read only will work. Sorry, parser for strings. We can't apply read to it because this is not a string. However, as we mentioned earlier, this thing is in the class monad. In other words, parser is a monad. So what we want to do is we want to apply read to the integer which is inside the parser. And the way that we've done that previously is to use the fmap operation. We're mapping the read over the parser to apply it to the integer which is inside. 
So now when we apply the number parser, we parse, you know, let's reload that file before we do anything else. Let's, um, let's parse the same example, but now using the number parser. Then we indeed we get the integer that we were hoping for on the front from the front. Okay, so now we come to the point where we really need to use some notion of sequencing. First parse one thing, then another. In particular, we're going to parse a number, then we're going to parse the plus symbol, then we're going to parse another number. So how do we do that? Well, we need to do sequencing. So there's no um, straightforward combinator for sequencing. Well, there are actually some, but the way that we're going to deal with sequencing is to take advantage of the fact that parser is in the class monad. So the way that we do sequencing then is to use do, a do block and to list the sequence of operations that we want to perform. So the first thing we want to do is get a number and we want to give it a name. So I'm going to call that number n. So n is a number. And then we're going to parse then we're going to parse a single plus symbol. So that's a symbol, a character that satisfies being equal to the plus symbol. And then we're going to parse another number, m. And then what we're going to deliver is the sum of m and sum of m and n. So what happens then in the in the do notation is that if any line of these fails, then the whole thing will fail. So if you fail to get a number in the beginning, then the whole thing will return nothing. Now, this sat operation sat equals to some specific character. In fact, there's a little function that does exactly that. It's called char in the library, and it's defined as you would expect to be a character satisfying that it's equal to the given argument. Okay, so that's introducing the basic primitives uh, with one more we'll look at. So the second one is, is we have a, a notion of multiplication. Now, rather than just do cut and paste here, um, let, me, let me just generalize the two. So we're going to introduce an, an additional operator, a function operation. And the parameters will be the things in, that are different from the, between the multiplication function, uh, the parser, and the addition parser. And there are two things which are different, namely the character C that we're going to uh, recognize in the middle and the corresponding operator that we're going to use to build the result. And so this thing is going to be more or less this thing here, except the character we're looking for is the character C, and the operator that we're going to perform is, I'm going to write it infix, to make it look like the, um, the example that we're generalizing. There we go, let's find the right uh, backtick character for the infix version of the operator. So now what we're actually doing here is an operation. All I'm doing is abstracting with the character uh, times and the multiplication function. And the addition is similarly um, the operation with the character plus and the addition operation. Now we need to combine those two. And to do the calculation, the idea of the top level function a parser with one that either accepts the addition of two, two objects and returns their sum, or the multiplication of two objects and, and returns their products. And the way that we do that in the library we can just go back to the synopsis of the, of the library here, is to use a choice operator. And actually, the choice operator is of a more general type, but for now, we can think about it as, get, as taking two parsers of the same kind and returning a parser of that kind of the same kind by, by first trying the first parser. If it fails, then you use the second one. So then we get, we simply get addition or multiplication. First try to parse it as an addition, and if you don't manage, then parse it as a multiplication. So now we have a little parser called calculation. And if we, um, we can parse both um, terms with uh, addition and also terms with multiplication. So that introduces the basic library primitives that we can now use to actually build a multitude of parsers. So in the next step, we're going to look at an expression parser for the full expression language. Um, and once we've done that, we'll actually introduce one or two more of the uh, basic primitives that can, we can use to uh, tidy up our code a little bit.